friends! My name is Megan and welcome to my 44th floss tube episode. If you are new here, welcome. This is a channel that is mostly about cross stitch. I do share my other hobbies here when I've worked on them, but it's been uh, so long since I did my last update that I only brought stitching to share today. Uh, and if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back and spending some time with me. I appreciate all of you even more than you know. Uh, today is Sunday, it is October the 1st, and it is a sunny day here in Maryland. We've had several days in a row of kind of dreary, chilly, uh, rainy weather, which is my very favorite. Um, but the sun came out today, uh, which means there are lots of people out and their dogs. Um, I've got Miss Cora right here, um, and as usual, if she gets too barking, I will try to pause and cut that out. She just had a lick mat and she went outside and she's a little bit sleepy, so we'll see uh, how this goes. Um, I hope everybody has been well. We've been doing okay here. Uh, Quentin uh, just got a new job that he's very excited about starting um, and we're really happy for him, so that's been great. He's at an Italian festival with his girlfriend right now. Um, Aaron is good, he's working too. He's just, you know, doing his normal things, pretty much. Um, I've been okay. Uh, it's just been a really busy season for me. Um, busy at work, busy in my personal life. Um, I feel like I've had something going on every single weekend, and those are mostly all good things. Um, but it's just been a lot. <laughs> you know, I'm very uh, introverted, so uh, being out somewhere or doing something every weekend has just been <laughs> a little bit of a struggle for me. Uh, but I'm looking forward to hopefully um, a quieter season uh, coming up. So, <sighs> I have a lot to share with you. Um, like I said, Cora's right here. She's alright. She's doing good. She's pretty much a good girl. Um, I put a bin down here. Uh, for me to put my things in after uh, I showed them to you and Mittens jumped into it immediately and went to sleep. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Chaos is normal, I guess. Um, all right, I'm going to just jump right into the stitching uh, because it's been so long I feel very out of practice. So um, bear with me a little bit if I'm a little clunky at first. Hopefully I can kind of find my flow again. All right, let's start with my monthly project. If you've been with me for a while, you know that I've been working on three monthly projects. I've been working on the Top Knot Stitcher Full Moons, um, the Little Stitchers 13 Moons, and um, By the Heart Needle Art, the Monthly Quakers. And I'd taken a break from all of them for a while, and I had pulled uh, the moons back out recently, and I was working on them. And I'm happy to say that I finished both of those projects. Uh, so we'll start now with the Top Knot Monthly Moons. Uh, they were living in this little project bag that I made. Um, I stitched them all on 32 count charcoal Lugana using most of the called for DMCs. If there were, um, if I didn't have the color, then I did substitute something that would be really similar. Um, and here are the first set. Uh, this was the Sturgeon Moon. I believe in my last video I talked about that I was going to pull that one out. Um, I didn't, there wasn't enough contrast between the background color and the waves and the fish. Um, so I did do that. I ended up unpicking that whole thing and restitching it. And like part of the way through, I was like, why didn't I just put this down here? It's fine. It's done. The Sturgeon Moon is done. So here are the first eight moons. These were a lot of fun to stitch. Um, I really enjoyed all of these. And then here are the last four. I can't remember the last time I showed this if I had finished the Beaver Moon or not, or maybe that was the one I was working on. I'm not sure. Um, but I know I didn't have this one done. Uh, this one I did substitute the toile for the white to make it a little sparkly. I'm sure you can't see that in the camera. Um, but these are were a lot of fun to stitch. I have an idea for finishing them into like a um, like a bunting <laughs> to hang. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll get there. But those were great. All right. So once I finished that, I was feeling really motivated, and I pulled out my thirteen moons. Well, this was a mystery sale. It's no longer a mystery sale. Um, like a little stitcher. I will put up a picture of what that looked like completed. I stitched these on a 32 count twilight blue linen. I think this might be a little short linen. 
again using almost all of the Call of Four DMC. The only change I think that I really made was the white of the moon. I substituted a white sulfy because that's my favorite white to use. Uh, it lived in this little pore line. Always into something. Um, sort of project bag. This was like the first one I ever made. Love this bag. So it lived in there and I will show you all the moons. There's three. I don't, I don't remember which ones I had, um, I have worked on since I showed this last time. I'm guessing, I feel like maybe I had this one done, but probably not the beaver or the December moon. I can't remember. And then here is the last little... 13th moon. Love it. These were also a lot of fun. These were small um, and easy to work on. Not a whole lot of colors. Um, my hope is to finish these into a um, into little flat bowls. So, all right. So once I finished that, I decided I was ready to pull back out my monthly Quakers. I had felt uh, a little burned out on that pro on this project. Um, and I had put it away for quite some time. I don't remember the last time I had actually even worked on it. So um, I was in the middle of working on the September Quaker. And this is what that looks like. I'm stitching all of these on a piece of 22 count <clears throat> Ada. And each of these call for three colors and I've just been pulling the colors from my stash. And when I pulled this back out, oh, hang on for me, okay, I'm back. Um, I was showing you, or getting ready to show you, the September Quaker by From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. I think that I was saying that I had pulled, um, I always pulled the three colors just from my stash, but I have on hand, and I'm stitching all of these on a piece of 22 count Ada. Uh, they live in this Maryland bag, and I was going through my bag, and I don't have the November Quaker in here, um, which I feel like I ordered, but maybe I didn't, so I don't know. I guess I'll have to figure that out. Get that soon. This Maryland bag. Uh, these are the colors that I pulled out for September. Um, I don't know that I would recommend Sulky for 22 count. It's a little tight, um, but we are committed at this point. So those are the colors that I'm using. And here's where I'm at. Got a string there. Uh, so when I pulled this back out, um, I had most of this motif stitched in. And I realized that uh, it, there was an error in it, and so I had to rip it out. And that was not fun, but I did it. We can move forward. So I've been working on getting this stitched back in, and I've been working on this big motif here. Um, I was watching Alba Stitcher last night, and she's also working on these. She showed in her latest video her finish of September, and she was talking about, like, this is a serious amount of stitching. These are actually... Um, more, more than you would think by looking at them. They're like, oh, these are cute little, um, cute little Quakers, but they are a lot of stitching. So I'm hoping to get at least September done uh, this year. Um, I've had to start and restart uh, this video probably a record number of times. So I don't remember if I've already said that I've got my October stitching plans here to share with you. Um, either way, I do have that <laughs> put together. Um, but yeah, so I won't work on this in October, but hopefully by the end of the year, I can at least get September done and early next year finish off this series. So there is that. Um, the next thing I have to share with you is a finish. This was a pattern that I was stitching along with my friends Olivia B, Emily C, and uh, Lara Duet, a friend at Emma Serial Starter. And this is Enchanted by Caratel Samplings. There are two options on how to do this chart, and I chose this one. I got this all kitted up from Olivia's shop, which is Hillside Rookery. It's amazing. Um, I know a lot of people talk about it, and a lot of people have been shopping there, and that's because it is wonderful. And Olivia is wonderful, so um, I always feel great about supporting her. I've got some more Hillside Rookery uh, to show you <clears throat> in my stacks here in a little bit. Um, so these are the silks. 
They came like that. And I just took them and put them, I cut out little tags and just stuck the numbers on the back. So cute. Just four colors. And in this pine cone bag that I made. I stitched this on a piece of 40 count Dead Sea Scroll, I think by Seraphim. <clears throat> Excuse me. My Anna sells little cuts like this, and I always pick up a couple when I go there at Needle Craft Corner. Uh, and here's my finish. This was great fun. I love, love how this turned out. I love that little deer. And it was just, it was a very like relaxing, uh, calming stitch. So it's great. The silks were fantastic to work with. Um, yeah, I love it. So to get a little frame for that. Uh, the next project I have is also a finish. This, uh, <laughs> this project had given me some struggles. Um, if you'll remember, I have started it three times. Uh, and that project is Sunflower House by Blackbird Designs. This is my poor, poor working copy. <laughs> uh, this was borrowed from a friend. So that's what it looked like. It lived in this cute little bag here. And I, um, I used all the called for colors, which are mostly here when I pulled them out of the bag. So when I finish a project or when I am done enough with a project that it is ready to go into the floss tube bin, it's just like zip, close, I don't clean out my bags or do anything like that until after I film. Um, there was a color missing, there was a blue in this pattern that it was not in the bag, so I'm not sure where that went to. Um, anyways, used the call four colors and this was my first start, first time I started it, I was stitching it uh, two over two on 36 count granite. Okay, the uh, mail just came, which is strange because it's Sunday, but it's all right. Anyways, uh, the first time I started stitching this, it was on 36 count granite, um, and I was stitching it two over two, and I just did not like the way that my stitches were looking, uh, which is kind of weird because I typically stitch two over two on 36 count. That's my typical preferred method, but for whatever reason, this was just not working for me, so I decided to restart it. I will... Um, figure out a way to turn this into something else. Maybe like a little needle book or something. I'm not sure yet. So then I restarted it on a piece of 40 count stoneware by Color and Cotton. And I just got a little tiny start and you couldn't see it. I didn't like it. Got rid of that too. And I finally settled on a piece of 38 count. What is this? Hair and Gray by Legacy Linens. And here is my finish. So I'm super happy with how this turned out. It's, I mean, some of the colors are a little light on it. Um, I think they're looking lighter in the uh, camera than they are in real life. Um, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. I did take the flag out and added in a little red bird instead. And I love it. And I'm very thankful that my friend let me borrow this. Uh, and I'm glad to have this one done. The next thing that I worked on and finished was an existing whip, and this was um, American Beauty by Sheepish Designs. Looks like this. This was a fun, um, summery type, <laughs> type piece to work on with the bright colors. Not colors that I typically stitch with. I lived in this um, little doggy bag. Super cute. And I just pulled all the colors from my stash. It called for a lot of silks. Um, I just pulled all of these from my stash. I stitched it on a piece of 32 count black linen, which I think when I originally started it, that was like giving me some trouble, but um, I switched to a Baltic needle, which is really my preferred needle at this point, And it was smooth sailing after that. So here's my finish. Isn't that pretty? I really love the way that this pops on here. Um, there is a lot of satin stitching in the leaves and in some of these roses here. Um, I love this. I think this is so pretty. So I'm glad to have that one done. All right, next up I have a new start. Um, I, I started this sometime in August. I'm not sure 
when I feel like there was a reason I was going to start it, but I can't even remember what that was either. And anyways, um, this is Weatherwise by the Prairie Schooler. Um, it's obviously a reprint and Cora set directly on this chart. So <laughs> I keep little, um, like little pop-up bins of projects. There's one that, um, are the ones that I kind of rotate through and then, um, I have one where I keep things that I want to start or I want to remember that I have because out of sight, out of mind, right? And this one was sitting in the front of that um, and it was just in like a in like a sleeve, like a clear plastic sleeve and I had all the stuff in there and she just like sat right on it and crushed it up a little bit. So anyways, I've loved this chart for a long time. Um, I'm stitching this one up here. I believe it was Andrea I Heart Cross Stitch was the first person I saw that stitched it and I was in love with it ever since and it was hard to find for a long time and then they reprinted it. So I'm just doing this one right here. It says red sky at night, sailor's delight, red sky in the morning, sailor take warning. I'm stitching this on a piece of 32 count driftwood by Color and Cotton. And it was another Maryland bag. Uh, and here is where I got to. Um, this is really pretty linen. I really like that a lot. I'm using pretty much all of the called for DMC. I think I am going to change in the front. There's like a big red house and the color that it calls for, I think was more brown than red. So I do think I will be changing that out. I've got a couple options in my bag. Um, but this is just, you know, classic prairie schooler comfort stitching, a lot of fill in. Um, just fun. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I probably won't pull this back out until next summer, but I'll be looking forward to it when, when that comes back out. All right, next pile. <laughs> We're getting there, friends. Um, I'm out of LaCroix. I don't know how that's happened. I need to go to the store. So I put my water in a skull mug for the first day of October today. All right, I have been working on um, a gift. Well, I've actually, I've been working on a couple of secret stitches. I've got maybe three <laughs> that um, I've been working on that I can't show here just yet. Um, but this one should be fine because uh, these are for my coworkers and none of them, uh, to my knowledge, well, I think only one of them knows that this channel exists and um, so no, nobody should be watching. <laughs> um, I stitched ornaments for them and I'm working on this year's. Uh, this is from the Laurel Witch, her ad, her Christmas Advent series that she did. Um, I think she closed her shop, but then I saw that she might reopen it, so I'm not sure what, um, I don't know what's going on then uh, with that. Um, so I don't have a picture of this to show you, but it was in this bag. There was actually quite a few gift projects in this um, I won this at the New Jersey retreat, not this past one, but the one before that. Quite a few projects in there. Um, I'm stitching these on 36 count Nantucket Brew. I think that's what by R&R. &R. Uh, using the Claude Ford DMC with the exception of the white for the snow, I'm using a DMOP. And I've got three of them done. I need six. And I've got the branches going for the last three. I was doing these one at a time and then I was starting to get frustrated so I, uh, I'm i just going to try to color complete them the last three. So that's how they're turning out. These are awfully cute. I might uh, eventually have to do one for myself. So Those are getting there. I was trying not to wait till the last minute kind of like I did last year but that might end up that way anyway so we'll see. Next up, I have a new start. I have been working my way through uh, the French Kitchen series um, that Summer House Stitch Works and Hands On Design did. And I've got two of them complete. And so I started uh, for the last little bit of summer. I started this one. This one is Blueberries and Thyme. I've got these um, as all as a kit. So it came with all of the threads here and the fabric. This one is a piece of 32 count uh, Friendship Green, uh, hand up by Stephanie. It was in 
this Black Eyed Susan bag. This is the like the first vinyl bag I ever made, and it's all floppy. <laughs> Not great. It's okay. But I've been working on this here and there, and here's where I've gotten to. Um, I've almost got the top half completely done. Um, there is like a back stitch, the like kind of wallpaper that goes here, and some eyelet stitches at the top, and then top half will be done. I'm thinking maybe in November I'll start the last one so that way um, I can focus on trying to get these out of the wood pile. So coming along. Coming along. Uh, October 1st is Witchy Stitcher Day. Um, she's going through some health challenges and an uh, effort to help support her today. I know a lot of people are starting uh, with G Stitcher projects or purchasing um, PDFs from her store or just generally supporting her. Um, and we had done, a bunch of us had done a hashtag uh, Stitchy for Witchy. Um, and I had made a start on uh, a project whose name I can't remember off the top of my head, but I will put a picture in here. <laughs> um, it is Sam from Trick or Treat. And I stitched this on a piece of 36 count black Lugana, maybe. I don't think that this is linen. I think this is an even weave. And it lived in this bag here that I've made. And I did finish this project. That turned out really cute. I really, really love this, how that turned out. So there's that. The next project that I have to share is an older whip of mine. Um, I think I've been working on this for two years, I think. Uh, this is Tiny Modernist Moon Phase Bell Pool. And um, I was watching Cross Stitch Kate's video and she's made a start off of this. She's doing it as a birth sampler and she's doing it on Ada, which will probably make this go a lot faster. This is a pretty big project. This is only 65 wide, but it's 289 high. So that's pretty big. But hers is coming along really nicely. Uh, we also recently learned that we are birthday twins. We share a birthday. So it's really cool. I think her channel is awesome. I love watching her. Um, I'll be sure to tag her below. But here's the Moon Bell Pool. It lives in this uh, Quilting with Nico bag. And every time I show this, my threads are a mess. And so I guess at some point I was like, I'm going to get floss ties, I'm going to put them in there, I'm going to get my threads organized. <laughs> so um, I did not do that. I put the floss tags in, but look, they're all still a rat's nest. So it's fine. I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count Timberwolf by Seraphim Fabrics. Here's where I'm at. So let's see, what have I added in? I think I did this whole full moon. And then I've been working on bringing the border down um, and back up. That's like good kind of mindless stitching. These are, um, they're only, what, three colors, but uh, they are a little kind of confetti heavy. So. They are looking amazing though. These these might be the best cross stitch moons I've ever seen. I think these are gorgeous. Uh, so it's getting there. It won't get finished this year. Um, might not get finished next year. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, the important thing is just to keep moving forward on it. I do have some ideas on what to do. This is with the rest of this fabric. I obviously have quite a bit here. Um, there's those Stacy Nash projects that came out maybe it, I don't know when they came out um but they're on kind of like a dark gray and I think I can use this for those all right the next project is another new start um this I am stitching along with my friend Anne and uh, she was like hey do you want to start this and I said absolutely I want to start this she had gone on to Hillside Rookery and ordered with uh, Olivia for the first time for the threads for this and so I obviously had to go on and order <laughs> the threads as well 
Uh, this project is Painted Wings by Kathy Barrick. Um, I don't have a cover sheet, so I'll have to put in the pictures here. And so, of course, I'm using all of the beautiful NPIs from Olivia. She's living in this little mushroom bag here. This was a very sweet card from Olivia. I don't, um, I don't know if you can see one of her cards is up on my shelf there, too. They're so pretty. And the little bag that it came in. Did I show those earlier? Yeah, love. Love her shop. I'm stitching this on a piece of 40 Count Tuscan by Color and Cotton. And I've not gotten a very big start on this. I was um, working on it during, well, I was watching a Board of Ed meeting and I made a mistake and had to rip uh, a bunch out. And so then I got a little frustrated and haven't really worked on it since. Um, so I've just got the top started. It's a really pretty piece of fabric. It's um, maybe a little more green in real life than it's showing here. But there's my little start. Um, I do have to say that the chart is kind of hard to read. I, I bought it as a PDF off of Kathy's shop and I don't know if maybe it's meant to be um, like used on a tablet or something like that because it's when I printed it it was really small. But either way I'll make it work. So I'll keep picking away at that. And it feels really really pretty. I love that fabric too. All right, we're almost at September. <laughs> we are almost at September. I don't have very many left to go, actually. So leading up to September, um, I think a lot of us were considering what we would start for the Baptist School Sale, which was hosted by Lauren, the New Hampshire Stitcher. I'm sure everybody <laughs> has like heard of this by now. Um, it was hugely popular and for a very good reason. It was a lot of fun. Um, so as I was digging through what I had kitted up and ready to go um, to try to decide what I was going to start for that, um, I came across this chart in my stash and I had to start it immediately. There was just no, no question. I just I was like, oh, I'm going to start this right now. So it was like one night I just put out some fabric that was big enough and went for it. <laughs> and that pattern is mustard flowers. And this is by Desen. Uh, DHC. Uh, this is a French chart. It's a hand drawn chart. Um, I did have to copy it to um, to make the counting a little bit easier. It's not in ten blocks. It's in five blocks. Um, five by five blocks. And it is gorgeous. So I've worked on this a little bit. I'm stitching it on a piece of 36 count Sahara by Zweigart, and I'm using DMC 336, it's pretty blue. And here, so I've got. So this was on um, a half, a half yard of women. I have a half yard of this fabric. And so I wanted to get part of the border in enough that I could cut the fabric down. So I did that. Um, and it's just kind of like a pretty warm mustardy yellow. And the uh, pattern said to pick a fabric that looked like mustard. So I did that. So I haven't gotten too, too far on it. Um, I haven't really been focusing on it. I just really wanted to get the, like I said, get the border in so I could get this cut off of the big hunk of fabric, which I did. This might come out again next month. This feels very uh, fall vibes to me. All right. So now we are up to September 1st and the BAP to school sale. BAP is a big ass project. Um, and this is a big ass project. <laughs> um, I have a couple of big samplers that are kitted up and this is the one that I ultimately decided to go with. Um, this is the Mary Pet Sampler by Queenstown Sampler Designs. I was very intimidated by this pattern um, and by this chart. Uh, because there is an inside border here that is a closed herringbone stitch and I thought that that would be difficult and it is not. 
there are of course wonderful instructions um, also this house had a whole separate chart for it and I had not necessarily like read enough to know why that was but it's because when she when Mary stitched this um, she only left one thread between um, her bricks and so in order to show that she charted it like over one but you stitch it over two it, it makes more sense than um oh, power move um it makes more sense than how i'm explaining it it'll be a while before i get there anyways look at this duck i love it so i pulled this out and i started it um and i'm really 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 glad that i did i even i never do this <laughs> but i was trying to like be a little bit fancy and i put all my dnc because it calls for it a ton of DNC and I put it all um hang on sorry um all on little false cards and I felt very like grown up and put together but I kind of did myself dirty by doing this and I'll show you here in just one second what I did um I am stitching this on a piece of 32 count vintage luna by Lakeside nice big piece because this is a big old piece and I got the first page done so here she is here's the first page so you've got um, this pretty outside border this is the closed herringbone border here uh, lots of over one um, there's it says over one across the top and then there's an over one verse and a lot of over one birds. Look at this bird. I hope you can see that bird. He's so funny. I, I couldn't tell what it was when I was stitching it when I was done. I was like, oh my God, that's the funniest little bird ever. I love seeing little bits of um, whimsy in these girls' designs. And then a little tiny start on a tree there. So this is the first page. And how did I do myself dirty? Well, these two colors right here. This is 839 and 435. 839 is an X and 435 is a plus. And I was, when I'm sitting on my couch and I'm doing my stitching, um, I oftentimes just like throw all my <laughs> flosses on the, um, on the top cushion and I pulled them from there. And so I guess when I went to pull what should have been this color, I pulled this color instead. I think it was maybe like sitting like this and I was like, oh, that's an X. So, uh, that means that this whole verse is in the wrong color. <laughs> it should be uh, in this color up here. But I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to keep on keeping on with it. Hopefully, uh, Mary doesn't mind. But anyways, this was fun. I'm so glad for the inspiration to finally get it started. Um, I am looking forward to working on it again. It's going to be a long time project. Um, but it should be a great one. So I finished up that page and so the first weekend in September, I wanna say it's September 1st was a Friday maybe, and then we were off on Monday for Labor Day. So I finished that page by that Monday. I was, I was done with that and I was like, okay, I'm feeling this, sampler September, I'm really excited. I'm going to work on my uh, focus piece for the, um, my current focus piece. And that's the Desiderata and I'm going to try to get another chunk of the border done so that I can move on to um, some more sampler stitching. I was very, I was feeling very, very motivated. Uh, this is the Desiderata. This is by Lifetime Samplers. I'm stitching this on a piece of 16 count lamb's wool Ada using all the called for DMC. And it was in this project bag, lots of DMC, and I did get another chunk of the border done. So here's where we are. This is my oldest whip. Um, I started this in 2018. <laughs> Last year I got to the halfway point, <laughs> and um, this year I have, uh, once I finished Black at Sky, I pulled this out as my next uh, focus piece and I have been working my way across the top and then down the side of the border. So I will not get um, 
I don't know honestly if this will come back out again this year maybe in November maybe not I don't know but I will pick it back up nonetheless as a focus piece for uh, next year I keep plugging away so I got that done and I was like okay I'm going to continue on I've got I had some goals set out for the year and I was like well maybe I can try to um, you know meet some more of these goals this month um, and I started working on the next sampler I have here to show you and like <laughs> um, I just got so busy that I couldn't really focus on anything. So I did get some of this done and I got a little bit more done on another one, but it was not not nearly as much as I thought that I was going to do. And that's okay. That's okay. Um, I pulled out Mary Claire Carroll 1738 by Samplers Revisited. It's, it says it's the oldest known Maryland sampler. Looks like this. I believe the original is at the Carroll House in Annapolis see that sometime so um, the goal I was trying to reach for the year on this was I wanted to finish three pages and when I worked on it I think in January I got um, most of the three pages I was working on done until I got down to this section here um, and there are big like freeform embroidered flowers on it and I didn't want to do those necessarily yet um, because it's going to be in the Q-snap and I don't want to crush all of that stitching but I did want to go ahead and finish the cross stitching in that section there which gets me almost to the halfway point I think that um, this row here is the halfway point so we're getting there this is being stitched on a piece of 38 count Wayfarer's Cloak by Legacy Linen lives in this Maryland bag and I always like to show I keep my flosses here in um, these two Maryland bags I love them and I did reach my goal of finishing the cross stitch in those pages and I did actually start in on a little bit of the um, embroidery move way back <laughs> so here's where we are on this like I said I'm almost at the halfway point this is a big project uh, here's, there's a lot of satin stitches. I hope you can see how shiny it is. Um, I started this not last New Year's, the New Year's before. So, I got three pages done then, and now I've got three more done. So, good. And so here's the section that I worked on. I already had this row of eyelets done, and I started down here so I did all of the cross stitch and I had no intention of like I said working on the flowers but I did I was just like I just wanted to <laughs> so I did so I put in um, the leaves for this so you kind of outline what you're gonna do with a little back stitch and then you fill in and then you do a stem stitch around the outside of the leaves when they're done there is a lot of stem stitching in this section so I think this is looking pretty good. I will pull this out again probably in January. So that took me forever. <laughs> uh, that took me forever, um, but that's okay. That's okay. I did pull out uh, one more sampler to work on and um, I was able to reach the goal that I wanted. Well, it wasn't the goal I set out <laughs> to reach, but I feel like I reached a good goal um, on this. And this sampler is Agnes Rowlandson by Caratel Samplings. And I'm doing the little, this little one here. Um, this was a Dark October stitching start last year. I'm stitching it on a piece of 36 count millstone by Treehouse Barber Arts, maybe? I was in their club for one month and then they closed the club so this was the only piece I got. I get their newsletter, I just can't. It's fine. There's that. Uh, it lives in this Emily C bag from back in the day. I love this bag. And I'm stitching it in the club for DMC. And her colors are a little, a little wild. <laughs> Or I think. Anyways, here's where I got to. Um, 
So my original goal was to finish the border. Um, and then I was like looking at that and I was like, what? there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. <laughs> so instead I focused on this page. So I put in all of the, um, all of the doodads around the border. And then I started on her name and I did um, this first block that she has. This was fun. This was good to work on. I really, I was actually kind of dreading <laughs> putting all these little bits on this border but it was super relaxing and super fun. So um, it was just kind of mindless and what I needed and I really enjoyed it. So that's where we are with that one. <sighs> okay. So uh, that is everything that I have worked on <laughs> uh, since I saw you the last time. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, reset really quickly and I am going to grab my October stitching plans and I will um, we'll go over those next. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so I don't, like I said, I don't, I've started and restarted this video a lot of times so I'm not sure if I even explained what Dark October stitching was earlier, <laughs> um, but if not, Dark October, Dark October stitching is a stitch along that is hosted by Emily C of Eclectic Possessions and uh, Michelle of Cozy Egg. And um, basically, in October, you pull out all your dark, your spooky, um, whatever that means to you, uh, stitching, and you work on that for the month of October. I participated in this for, I don't know, several years now, and I look forward to it every year. I always like to try to plan a bunch of starts um, and just really have a good time going through my, my stash of things and, and picking some fun projects to work on. So last year, I started like once every five days or maybe um, I started a bigger project and then I had um, a stack of smaller projects that I just worked my way through throughout the month um, and this year what I've decided to do is just I pulled out a bunch of <clears throat> excuse me kind of small to medium projects to work on um, I have already worked on all of my October pieces from last year except for one so far this year. Um, so those will come out throughout the month and get a little bit of work on them. Um, <clears throat> I still have some projects that I kitted up last year that I never got to and I'm thinking that those might be like my car projects, my lunchtime projects, just to try to get through them. But I'd like to just, I want to stitch what I have. Um, I bought these for a reason. I bought them because I love them and they're not doing any good just sitting <laughs> in a bin. So <clears throat> I'll show you what I have kitted up. Um, I will say I'm not going to take these out of the plastic because um, it's just we've already got a lot going on here. That should just be too much. So let's see. The first one I pulled out is Cross-Eyed Cat by Not Forgotten Farm. I actually put out quite a few of her patterns. And that's just man. The three colors of DMC and this is a 28 count uh, linen that I just um, dipped in some coffee and tea. I dyed a couple of fabrics um, for this. I was really trying to use up what I had. So here's one possibility. This next is a Stacy Nash Primitives. This is the Spells Sewing Pouch. Which looks like this. And yeah. Um, I dyed this fabric too. It didn't turn out quite as dark as I Wanted, I didn't really want as much modeling, but by the time I <laughs> by the time I was done, I was done. So I think it'll look beautiful anyway. That one. This is the Mustard Seed Manor Sewing Book. Another Stacy Nash. I dyed up this fabric as well. This is a Not Forgotten Farm. This is 1783 Sampler Abigail Pruitt. This is a not a small <laughs> or a medium. This is, um, I wonder if I can see it. No, this, this is a big pattern. Um, there's not a lot of stitching on it. Like there's a lot of negative space, but I want to say it's close to 300 stitches um, high. Another fabric that I dyed and just the DMC. 
this one I'm excited to start. This has been something that I've loved for a long time. Um, I don't know why I haven't started it yet. Another Not Forgotten Farm. This is Nantucket Broom Ride. Yeah, here's all the DMC that goes with that. Another fab oh no, this was a fabric. Ship's Manor. It used to be part of their fabric of the month a long time ago. Pretty blue. Um, this one, this is the only one that I know has a specific date. This is going to be my Halloween start. This is We Are Fine by Mama Witch X Stitch. Um, I'll put in a picture <laughs> of Aaron and I. Um, I've got one that I could do from the wedding and I've got one that I could do from our engagement pictures. I'll put one of them in here and you'll see why I've decided to use this as my um, my Halloween start. That is our anniversary. So with the lighter fabric, there's the DMC. True confessions. A lot of times uh, when it comes to projects that call for a lot of DMC, um, I just buy it. Even though I have it, or even though I might have it, I tend to buy it because my DMC is a mess. I'm sure I've talked about this before. I've got, um, there's a bin, there's two more bins. Under here I've got two bins of floss. I've got at least one bag downstairs of floss and my DMC is a mess, but I made myself pull it all out and get these up with stuff that I already had. <sighs> I should have myself. Um, this is another Not Forgotten Farm. This is Isaiah Nye, uh, 1819. Can't really see on there. Um, there's like a cabin. Which color is there? And then this one is uh, Sylvia Thistle Broom. And I just have one piece of And for both of those, they will both fit on that piece there. Uh, this one might be what I start today. I'm not sure, but it might be. This is Miss Lucian's School for Girls Lesson 1 by Plum Street Samplers. And this says, trick or treat, stitches neat, or prickly needles stick your feet. Yeah, I should I have in there for that. This is another piece of that um, 36 count Sahara fabric. I also dipped this in some tea just to darken it up. I don't know that it's quite as grungy as I was hoping for, but um, maybe I could try to distress it afterwards. I've never, well, maybe I've done that once. But that might be today's start. Next up, we've got Witch Hazel by La Di Da. This came in the... Um, Kitten Stitcher Halloween box and from a few years ago and maybe two years ago. I can't time. Um, I'm pretty sure this has been released. So I've got dye this fabric and I've got the DMC here. She's cute. She's cute. Uh, this next one, this is the Merry Halloween book by Stacey Nash. Better hurry up, but we've got 10% left. Um, this, I think she released recently as separate charts. But I have this book, and there are four projects in here. Uh -huh. Dreaming of Halloween Pink Keep. Um, Read Your Doom Pink Keep. Eliza Ann, Pin Keep, and Fuel of Black Boot, Pin Keep. So I, um, I've got that in here with some fabrics for that. Two, I dyed these two, and some DMC. Uh, this one I don't have a completed picture of. I'm a member of um, Beast or God's Patreon, and they did, um, some over-the-garden wall patterns. I think it was last Halloween. Um, that's what that is. 
I would like to start that probably when I rewatch that series. Um, here is another Stacey Nash Primitives. This is the Potions Sewing Pouch. Just like this. These are cute. These two colors. Uh, this one's a little bit different. I've had this one for a while. I, I didn't buy this specifically, I don't think. I think it came in like with some other patterns that I bought. But this is Tricky Treat Cats by Holly Gordon. I think it's for imaginating. Cute. That's cute. Uh, this is a Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. This is called the Pumpkin Patch. Let me make this. Right here. And then lastly, this bag is full of all of my, um, my tombstone patterns. And I'm sorry, I'm going to unzip here. And I've got two of them that I would like to work on. Um, this October. The first one is Follow Me by the Primitive Needle. And the second one is called Lie Light. This is from Cozy Egg Designs Nocturne Collection. This is absolutely beautiful. Um, this is not a good printout. My printer is running out of ink, but so I've got those two picked out. Um, I've got a, this is Seda Silk for one and a Color and Cotton for the other, and I'd like to do them both on this. Um, one should fit on each side, I think. I bet. So those are all of my current spooky plans. Who knows how many of these I will get to. I obviously don't anticipate uh, working on all of them, but you know, it's fun to have options sometimes. So that's what I pulled out to possibly work on this October. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to pick, up, pick what I work on. It'll maybe just be um, how I'm feeling that day or what, I'm not sure, but lots of fun options to do. All right, the last thing I have for you, um, if you've made it this far, thank you so much. I'm sure this is going to be pretty long. Um, I kind of knew it was going to be just because um, it had been so long, but I do have a couple of things that came in the mail, um, and I'll go through those real quick. Uh, first is I'm part of the Color and Cotton uh, Fabric of the Month Club. This was August, Mystic Owl. It's pretty. This was a 40 count. And this was uh, September's. This is a 36 count, and this is Travertine. So very pretty. I got my very first piece of Fox and Rabbit flannel flowers. This came from the Stitcher's Garden in Arkansas. I need a piece of 36 count. Oh my gosh, I love this. Um, I have a sampler, a very specific sampler that I would like to put on this fabric. And I wanted a piece of 36 count and um, I couldn't find it anywhere. I, I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, and I just kept searching and searching and searching and finally one day it popped up um, from the shop and they shipped it out right away. So love that. Hopefully I'll have that to show you <laughs> one day. Um, I got a couple of pieces of antique needlework off of eBay. I got this little hope bookmark stitched on perforated paper. I love that. And I got this just because it was so bizarre that it came up for sale once and I was like, mm, maybe it's weird. I like it, but I probably don't need it. And then nobody bought it. And so then when it came back up again, I did. <laughs> and it's this cross stitch here. It's just so, it's just so weird. Look at their faces. I love it. Um, I got this bright needle pattern. This is Eliza Jane's Needle Keep and Scissors Flat. Like this. And this came with the, um, the wool for that as well. I got a copy of Sarah Comfort by Queenstown Samplers. This is Sarah Comfort 1810. Um, this is from Montgomery County, PA. And I normally just collect her Maryland samplers, but I was watching 
Daisy K Primitives. And she stitched this for her black sampler wall. And I fell in love with it and I finally purchased that. Also from Queentown, Queenstown Samplers, I picked up Mary Horner, 1772. Um, this is Centerville, Maryland. Centerville, Maryland pattern. Looks like that. Um, from a D stash, I got Britter Cup Designs, Touch of the Wilderness. Oh, that deer too. You guys know I'm having a deer month. And I also picked up um, Forest Babies. Uh, I blame Amy Loves Toads. <laughs> I always see her working on these animal patterns. Look at those skunks. And I always feel so inspired by them. I think they're so beautiful. I want them in my home too. Um, I have not stitched any of them yet, but I love them. I absolutely love them. From the Scarlet Letter, I purchased this directly from her. This is Sun and Moon Miniature Sampler. Somebody was selling this on a D-stash and um, I didn't get it. I didn't get to me please fast enough, so I ended up just buying it right from her. Also from the Scarlet Letter, um, I got the Francis Bliss and Lydia Hinkley samplers. Two small samplers. This did come with a kit. And lastly, we've got Seferina Harvey sampler, 1833. Just another little sampler. And that also came kitted up. Alright, that's everything. That's all I have to share. Uh, if you've made it to the end, Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate it greatly. Uh, I hope everybody has a wonderful October um, and that everybody is doing great. And thank you all. And I love you. Happy stitching. Bye.